disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. Versatility. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Kayla Carter, it's like, they shit on you. They shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Kayla Carter, it's like, they shit on you. Kill them. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? Eight the style defense. I well, well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Monday. You know, I'm doing a walk of shame this morning because I counted my chickens before they hatched because I was enjoying life seeing the bang, bang. Niner gang um, losing until Dan Quinn decided to say, hold my beer, Dan Quinn. Hold my beer. Um, yesterday was interesting, to say the least, because um, and, and Philly 500, kiss my ass, son. You know I love you, but kiss my ass. Because he said, you know, Mark Holmes is going to do eight videos a day about Lamar Jackson, you know, choking and stuff. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I want to hear how everybody, you know, he's an MVP, might probably be MVP this year again. Two and four playoff record, Dak two and five, 11 turnovers. That game, you know, everybody is on the Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes is the greatest quarterback of all time. Pat Mahomes' numbers weren't all that great. It wasn't like they were Tom Brady-esque where he's, you know, got five TD passes or something on it. That day was a day by their defense. They shut down Lamar Jackson. They kept making him throw all these deep passes that were overthrown, just sailing high. They took the ball away from him when they finally got down on the goal line on the one-yard line. They took the ball down away from him. Well, he did throw in the triple coverage. They did kind of get away with the pass interference, but they got the interception that kept them from scoring a field goal. And they forced him, you know, with a strip sack down on the 21-yard line. The defense and turnovers was the name of the game. That was the difference. That was the difference. And that's where I look at the Dallas Cowboys defense. We have a playmaker in Micah Parsons, and I don't know why Micah Parsons didn't show up in that playoff game, but he's not enough. I looked at San Francisco, and shout out to the Bang Bang Niner gang because I know I'm going to be hearing from you guys all off season if you win the Super Bowl like I did from Eagle fans. And that's fine. That's, that's part of the business of being here on YouTube. Um but the Lions were beating the hell out of them. And this begs the question right now. This begs the question that now that Pete Carroll is gone, Bill Belichick's gone, Ron Rivera's gone as head coaches, I think Andy Reid is the oldest coach right now. And, and I may be wrong on this, but I don't know who's older than Mike McCarthy. I don't know who's older than Mike McCarthy as a coach. If you know offhand, let me know. Because now we have the next generation of head coaches that are coming through. Younger guys, more energy. Say what you will about Dan Quinn and, and his balls. That he's got more balls than anybody else. And he's going to. You know, he is going to just say, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. And I don't care, he, you know, even though it's cost him two games, two big games. But be that as it may, you got to respect that. And those players follow his lead. They have that energy. They have that grit. They had no fear going into San Francisco. And San Francisco, you better be thankful you came out of that thing with a victory. They, they came in there to play. But what you're seeing now is the hires thinking that Bill Belichick, one of the winningest coaches in history, uh, won more Super Bowls than anybody else, that 
He only got one interview for the Atlanta Falcons. Pete Carroll, a guy who's been to two, really respected. Ain't nobody looking at him. That the old guard coaches are passe. It's Rod Mayo, hired in New England. Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce is younger than me. With the Raiders. Um, the Texans coach. You see that this wave of you new, young innovators and Kyle Shanahan going to the Super Bowl. That there is Andy Reid, who is the GOAT right now. And then we have Mike McCarthy. And this is one of those mistakes that the Cowboys, maybe, maybe they're making. I don't know. I don't know. But do these older guys... Do they mesh well and understand the younger generation and how to motivate them? Because I look at how these teams are playing. Forget about the different talent level. I just look at the energy, the focus, the complete ice in the veins. 49ers, we're getting the, we're getting punched in the face. They couldn't get anything to go right. Yet, they didn't lose focus. They didn't give up. They didn't... Oh. Is that something that's in coaching? Where these younger guys understand because they play, you know, PlayStation 2? That they understand social media and they understand because they're closer to their age? I don't know. I'm putting it out there. Look, my goal on this channel is, if nothing else, to make you think about different possibilities or different ideas. Because typically what happens is, is everybody gets tribalized and they have their, I, I am right, this is the only way to go it. And they don't ever open up their minds to the possibility that maybe something else might be better or maybe that your idea and my idea together actually comes up with a solution that works for everybody. And that's my thought here. Mike McCarthy did great things with the offense and Dak Prescott until we got to the playoffs. You can't deny that. You can't deny that. 36 TDs, 9 interceptions, 4,600 passing yards. One of the best regular seasons in Dallas Cowboys history. And you look at that without a running game. You look at that with an offensive line that's in flux. That's pretty good. We just got to be able to do it when it counts. And I look at it and say the defense is still lacking pieces. But maybe we need to wonder if we, like Jerry Jones... If Mike McCarthy, and now we're talking about acerbating it because now we're looking at bringing in a Ron Rivera as possibly defensive coordinator. This is, this is two old guys on the front porch now that are coaching guys that are three times younger. That's one of those questions that we have to ask as Cowboy fans. Now, I am uh, I'm gonna keep it short this morning because I'm gonna hit the road with my lovely bride of 20 years and one day, and we're gonna go down to Myrtle Beach for a couple of days and um, relax and just kind of catch our breath and get ready to really push on through this year. Relax before we go through the whole grind. And we're going to, we, we, I've already started this year planning and figuring out what I'm going to do because the best way to succeed is to know what your plans are so you don't waste time trying to figure it out. I'm going to spend my time right now figuring it out. What I do know is me, Game Time Brian, maybe Daniel Hernandez, um, David Wiley, and Primetime Phil that we're going to be headed to Detroit to this guy's neighborhood we'll be there at the draft and we'll be there downtown at the draft covering that because that's where the hope is for the cowboys and i'm already looking about going back to training camp so we've got a lot of work to do a hell of a lot of work we have the senior bowl yeah we've got the combine end of february 
And then we got free agency. Tampering starts March 11th. That's not far away. Less than a month and a half away, we have to be under the cap, letting guys go, and hopefully bringing some people in. So there is no offseason, so that's why I'm going to go catch my breath right now. Let's go. I, I haven't listened to this, but I want to see how they treat Dan Campbell and the choke. Um, and I wanted to get the upper hand back, um, you know, and it's easy hindsight, and I get it, you know. Um, Walk of shame. That. But I don't regret those decisions. As a player, how do you factor in? Love it. What's it like playing Love it. Keep, keep us out there. Love it. We should convert. Love it. Keep All right. us out there. That's it. Put your feet up. We've got a lot of time for you here. Commercial oh, free. Damn. We're not going anywhere. We hope you won't either. We have so much to say. Rex, what is your first takeaway from Lions 49ers? The, the Lions just have to look themselves in the mirror and say, why did we lose this game? We gave it to them. They you did. absolutely gifted this game. And, and it just it drives me crazy because I'm going to say something. They had the best offensive game plan of anybody of any game this year. They were bludgeoning this football team. And quite honestly, right before half, if Jameer Gibbs doesn't slip, mm -hmm. they on go the up three scores yeah. on the screen. Mm -hmm. That's a touchdown. If Goff doesn't, you know, uh, miss a two on the same drive, it's miss a it. touchdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, at the end, okay, yeah, it, people are going to point to Dan Campbell about, oh, he shouldn't have gone for this. Yeah, that's because we have hindsight. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to knock this team out. Okay, and, and, and he does it. But are we going to sit back and look? We get a, a chance to intercept the ball. The young man, I got to say something. This kid was on the street mm -hmm. yeah. in week 10. Yeah. Yeah. And he's starting. And he's starting. All right. Nobody, not one time do they talk about two backups playing guard, backups playing corners or whatever. They never talked about it. But the kid, unfortunately, drops an interception. And Ayuk makes an unbelievable catch there. Right. And then they go back, turn around. The kid, he makes a mistake. Gibbs has fumbled one ball all season. He comes in, goes the wrong way, a mental, mental mistake, fumbles the ball or whatever. Now, all of a sudden, the game's tied. Yeah. And it, momentum just, you know, flipped like crazy. It but did. to me, Dan Campbell, you know what was who was consistent? Yeah. Dan Campbell was yeah. consistent. The third, the third quarter choked him out. Like, the third no. quarter choked Detroit out. All right, so let's, let's, let's address the decision-making. 100% right decisions by Dan Campbell. I think anybody that disagrees doesn't understand the Lions this year, okay? Not only is it the right thing about who they are, but who they were playing – and how Could you imagine if that was Mike McCarthy? This isn't that just did an that. analytics thing. They've won four or five games this year by Dan Campbell doing just that. Now, I think this is what happens in when you when you look at those fourth down decisions and to go for it or not. Third down matters a lot in this conversation. This is the third down. They motion the tight end over. They've got Amon Ross St. Brown at the backfield. They're gonna run on the nickel. This is a great play design. Watch Fred Warner. This, they get the fourth down because Fred Warner makes an unbelievable freaking play. If not, that play might score, let alone get the first down. Then it goes to fourth down. We could sit here and say bad decision, or we could sit here and say drop. W which one is more likely? That, that 20 times out of 24 times they've gone for it on fourth and three th this year and got it, that it doesn't matter? So this is the third down before. They're going to bring cover 88. RC, you know this one. They're going to bring the backside backer, drop the defensive end, play cover two front side. It's a great call because they're throwing that out route to Amma St. Brown. Let's credit San Francisco. Make the tackle. Tackles. Okay? Yeah. yeah, like make the tackle. Third and ten goes to fourth and three. Then they go to fourth and three. Uh, Arik Armstead. Now watch Armstead in the middle of the pocket. Okay? This matters. If you don't get that internal pressure, two-man game in the middle of the pocket, bottom of the screen, we've got a big in route coming. Fred Warner takes that over route. That, that in route at the bottom of the screen is going to be wide open. But instead, Jared Goff has to leave the pocket and no one's open. So the plays are there to be made. It's just the reality that third down, San Francisco made them. There's a drop, and then fourth down, Armstead makes a play. The, the, the decision was the right decision. It's been who they have been all year. They were dominating the game. you got to credit San Francisco for making them, and Detroit had the drop. Yeah, can I just say one thing about that, that last down? The only time Detroit never knew what defense San Francisco was in was that play. Was on that play, Greeny, because before before that, Dano, they showed man coverage. Right. They had the back outside. He motions back in the backfield. They're showing man coverage. They right. actually played zone. Right. And imagine that they finally were creative. That took it off. Now all of a sudden, the decision like, oh shoot, 
And that's why they know they can go for it on fourth down because they know the they know they've exactly been great at it all year. Defense. They, the, the, the bottom line but, is, man, you win these games. What's right? the blue People, thing on his thumb? You don't thumb. have to sit back, or you can't sit back and wait for good football teams to lose championship games. And to me, that's what Dan Campbell wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I would have an issue with Dan Campbell if we go for the field goal there, right? And we miss the field goal. And I'm Jared Goff. I'm on Ra St. Brown. I'm one of those guys on defense, Aiden Hutchison, because I'm going to ask him, Coach, why are you switching up on me? Right. You've been consistent not only this year, since you got here. When we were 0-3, or when we only won three games in the first year, you believed in us. When we started out 1-6 last year, you believed in us. And now, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. with all of the cards on the table, you are going to change who you you are to be right. You're going to change from being yeah, the guy that went for three consecutive two point conversions, even though we knew the world <laughs> knew that you shouldn't have been going for them. because what it did was when we got the third seed, when we did have home field, we beat the Los Angeles Rams and it swung back around to us and we beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So why in the hell would we not believe that if we go for it on fourth and three in the third quarter on fourth and three in the fourth quarter that we aren't going to get one? Yeah. Because we always get one. Yeah. When you look at this team, they were prepared to win this game. They didn't make plays. It's not only that drop for Reynolds. There were a the lot of drops. Down drop on crosser. Critical. On the crosser. Yeah. There are so many plays that should have been made in the second half by the Detroit Lions that just weren't. Sometimes it's about the guys executing the positions you put them in, yes. and the Detroit Lions did not do that. That's 100% so good. It's missed RC. opportunities. And missed opportunities all over the place. MOBP, missed opportunity for a big play by the young yep. DB, goes off his hands in his face mask. Who saw that coming? The kid had amazing coverage, yep. all right, and then gives it up. And then the, the drop on third down by Josh Reynolds is great. The other thing, what happened to the great punt? They have a great punt. They can down that they on the one-yard line. Yep. They, they don't get it. So the opportunities were there. And you're right. Everybody's going to point to the Neanderthal coach again. B.S. I don't think they're the, there because of that damn yeah, guy. And I don't think the decisions, everyone gets wrapped up in, like, the analytics and everyone wants to blame analytics when these things happen. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't believe a lot of this is an analytics thing. I believe it's an identity thing. For it's a, it's a, or, see, I think I'm going to impose is, like, my will this thing. This is what he started to do when they weren't a good football team and in part of – the reason why they became, they became a good, a good team. way the game was going. They were dominating the football game. It was fourth. They, they've gone for it on fourth and three or less. All right, I'm going to leave it right there. What it is is I believe in my guys, and we're going to keep our foot on the pedal. If we lose it this way, we lose it this way. But it's consistency. It's not wishy-washy where you wonder, e -e 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 -e. no, this is, we're doing this. And that has probably instilled that identity with those guys, okay? You know, and, and they'll take this loss, and I think that they'll actually be better from it. You know, I'm, I, I wish I had a coach that had balls, that the, the guys truly believe in him. And this is the new generation of coaches. And we'll find out if the Cowboys are making another mistake again as always, waiting forever to make a move. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys, and I'm going to hit the road. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.